All right, I've uh, contacted uh, my authority uh, <laughs> on everything Native American, and that's um, Michael Badhand. Um, he's posed for me in the past and also has brought in people to pose uh, for me who are Native American and dressed in authentic uh, clothing of the 1800s. He told me that this uh, brush here that I was making, the one in this picture, is a modern day uh, porcupine tail brush and it's made for sale and in actuality well I'll come right back and tell you about it time to play with some clay So I went online and I found some uh, porcupine tail uh, brushes that uh, are more authentic of that period. Uh, Michael told me that the uh, brushes were actually round. They weren't flat. So I'm going to be getting rid of this tail here and uh, recycling the clay. This is going to be the armature for the uh, hairbrush. Uh, her head would be about seven and a half to eight, eight inches long. And so I'm going to make it just a little bit taller than her hair or head. <laughs> anyway, oh man. And I can see why the Blackfeet used uh, that type of tail over a uh, regular comb. It's more like a round uh, hairbrush you can buy today. Anyway, Tiffany Jordan on YouTube commented on my video yesterday, and she said, So enjoy your work. <laughs> About the porcupine brush, I raised a porcupine, and the, the underside of its tail is very stiff bristles. He used the tail to help push himself up trees or my leg i can see how that would be made into a comb the bristles were about one inch in length so that uh, explains the type of uh, structure of a porcupine tail uh, brush hairbrush and i can understand why they would use that in, rather than a comb uh, so that's what i'm going to make a porcupine tail hairbrush all right, I've covered I co uh, covered this uh, wooden dowel, which is going to be my uh, armature for the uh, hairbrush, and I've covered it with a thin layer of uh, uh, clay, which will act as the wood part of the uh, hairbrush. I've also made a hole in the uh, hand to put the uh, hairbrush in. Before I put the hairbrush in though, I'm going to do the thumb and uh, part of the hand before I do that. But that's going to be so that the foundry can take this out of the hand and uh, make a mold of this separate. Now the key to this is to get the uh, clay the same thickness all the way around for the uh, the brush part. I'm going to use my ink roller that I got off of Amazon. All right, I'm going to roll out the clay and try to get the same thickness as the other one. I'm doing this because I got to keep the uh, 
bristles of the tail the same length. And this is the only way I can think to do it, is uh, by making a single flat piece of clay and then wrapping it. Now, I, my next thing is, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna make this look like the bristles of a brush. This will be narrower at this end where the uh, bristles are going upwards. Okay. I don't know if that's uh, convincing what it is right now, but... It's going to have to be, because I can't do any better than this without actually having real quills. Okay, I've got to apply some lighter fluid on that. Okay, I'm going to use some Ronsonol to uh, soften the clay and to uh, clean up this brush a little. For this, I'm going to use a stiff brush. I'm using a basting brush that you use when you cook a turkey. You baste it with a brush. And I use these kind of brushes because they're cheap and uh, they don't shed their, their bristles. Shed bristles on a turkey would not be good. This just softens the uh, crevices a little bit. Well, I'm going to say this is my first porcupine brush, hairbrush, because I may just do this again at some point in the future. All right, it's uh, getting late in the afternoon. I got a late start today, so I won't be able to do anything on the hand. Um, I'll work on that tomorrow. I will be here all this week. We're going to have to cancel the trip to Bozeman or to Livingston uh, this week and go back over there next week. The uh, snow has been heavy this week and it's going to be snowing the rest of the week. So rather than take a chance on the uh, pass, we have two passes to go over, mountain passes. Uh, we're just going to wait till next week. All right. Um, thank you for watching the video today. I, I was really appreciative of Michael Badhand, who has been so helpful to me. Um, he's been an, uh, a treasure. He's a national treasure, really. I mean, he's done so much research um, and has been a real asset to some of the most famous uh, Western artists in the country. And uh, so I'm very privileged to have his help. All right, everybody. I'm going to say good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.